good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another session of Midweek Chatter with Wonder Girls. My name is Cheryl. And I'm Mabel. Hope everybody's keeping well as we enter our fourth week of Circuit Breaker. If you have heard our conversation earlier on, tell us in the comment who is your favorite English singer or pop band, regardless yeah. of which era they are from, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. And you can also share with us which is your favorite English Premier League football club. Okay, uh, meanwhile, allow me to share a little bit more about ourselves if you are new to Travel Wonder. So Travel Wonder is a licensed offline and online travel agency that specializes in active holidays. So if you are looking to hike, cycle or run overseas, do look for us. At the same time, we can also arrange for other kinds of vacations like family fun holidays, rest and relaxation trips or romantic getaways. So when you are ready to travel and when the world is ready to welcome us, please do keep us in mind. And as, um, our website is www.travel-wonder.com if you'd like to have a look at all the active holidays that we have on offer. So who Cheryl, do we have in the house today, Mabel? Well, we just discussed about English singers, pop bands, football clubs. So our friend is Shirley from the UK. Let me bring him online now. Okay. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Mabel. How are you? <laughs> good. We are good. Oh, good. We are as good. You, How has your morning you, been so far, Pete? My morning has been good. The sun is shining, that's, and that's in England, so it's an excellent day. Um, <laughs> so the day's off to a wonderful start, I have to say, yes. Okay, that's good. Um, okay, now I shall take sit back, relax, and leave the both of you, Cheryl and Pete, to chat. So our audience, please like, comment, and share. You may also start a watch party with your friends. If you have any questions to ask Pete, feel free to put them down in the comment box, and then we will respond to them either during or uh, after the chat session. Okay, I'll leave you guys now. All right, thank you, Mabel. Hi, Pete. It has been years since I last saw you in person, but I do follow you, your Instagram closely, especially where you have been heading for cycling. So which part of UK are you now in? Uh, I'm in London. Well, specifically uh, 16 kilometres uh, south of London. So for all your football fans, um, I live <laughs> in, in Kent and very close to the Crystal Palace um, Exhibition Centre and football, not too far from their football training ground. So, mm. Yeah. Mm. so very close to London, yeah. I see. So Pete and I used to be ex colleague at our previous employment and I travelled with him twice in Europe. So Pete, would you like to share with us more about what you do? Sure. Um, I'm a travel director with uh, Trafalgar Tours. Um, I've been with Trafalgar for, this is my third year now, but just to, to sort of go back, um, I've been with the Travel Corporation for 18 years. So 18 years ago, my great European adventure started when I was provided with an amazing opportunity uh, to start work as a travel director with Contiki Holidays. Uh, I worked with Contiki for six and a half years. Um, then I became a little too old for that youthful generation, so <laughs> I wanted to stay, stay with the company. Uh, and I, again, had a great opportunity to work for Insight Vacations mm. and Luxury Gold. Mm. Uh, and I worked for them for nine years, and that's where we met um, yes. and worked yeah. together and had two wonderful trips in Europe together. Yeah. And then three years ago, I had an amazing opportunity presented by Trafalgar. So I'm still with the same, the same company, which is Trafalgar Tours and mm -hmm. Cost Saver. Uh, so I'm a travel director for them. Uh, where do I work? I work in Europe. So... I do Western Europe, so all of our trips that begin and finish in London. Um, but I also am what we call a multi-region travel director. So I also specialise in the former Eastern Bloc. Mm -hmm. So we're talking the Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland, Croatia, the Dalmatian coast, all the way down to Istanbul, um, as well as specialising in Spain, Portugal, Morocco. Mm. So, Yeah. It has so been a long I, time. You have been in a long time doing tour directing for 18 years. Yeah, true. But when you love something, uh, you never work another day in your life, really. So, um, And, and you, you, your guests have probably picked up, uh, this is not an English accent. 
Um, I'm, ori- <laughs> <laughs> I'm originally from Fremantle, Western Australia. So um, I spent my f- formative years there, but I've been over here for 18 years. So 18 years young, I'd like to say. Yes. Yeah. So you see, it's always such a joy that I always like to talk to you about what you do because you share so much passion. And I also love to tap into your knowledge because to spend 18 years and knowing the whole of Europe at the back of your hand, I think that is just incredible. So by the way, Travel Wonder is also one of the authorized travel agent for all the travel brands that Pete has worked for. Do not hesitate to let us know if we are considering booking a trip when you are ready to travel. So Pete, tell me more. What motivates you to keep going at your job? Has the motivation changed since you first joined? No, I don't think the motivation has changed. Um, the Probably the what's available to engage with our guests has changed. And when I say change, it's probably mm-hmm. improved. Um, so that how we can deliver those experiences, but also what uh, our guests want to experience and how to experience I think has changed as well. So um, to want to change with that um, always keeps me motivated as well. Um, and just like talking to you today, we haven't uh, we haven't seen each other for a long time, but it's a big smile on your face when we do catch <laughs> up. It's the same. It's the same reaction from our guests. You know, whether it's seeing the Eiffel Tower for the very first time, the Colosseum, mm. or um, you know, it might be a field of lavender um, in the Loire Valley somewhere, or I don't know, drinking a glass of wine or some. Uh, some French pastry, uh, when they actually get that experience for the first time, um, if that doesn't bring me back to work and keep me motivated, then I really don't know what will. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Plus, actually, I, actually, I agree with you totally. When you see the smile on your guests when the first time they are visiting something that they always dream of, then it just appears right in front of them. The kind of delight shown on your face tells you that all your efforts are worthwhile. Absolutely. And it, it, it may not just be food and drink. It could be shopping. It could be designer <laughs> <Okay>. handbags. <laughs> yes, when, shopping. When we see the words Gucci or Louis Vuitton in Venice. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, especially when you see they set their hands on that bag that they have been like dreaming about. Oh, the kind of expression on the face was like, oh, priceless. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and then they say, I'll take four. <laughs> yeah. No, so it's, it's, it's... Yes. It's always good. So that's always a great motivation. Yeah. So it must have been hard for you with the current COVID situation since many parts of Europe went into lockdown and visitors are no longer allowed into Europe for the, temp- for the moment. What are you doing to occupy your time? I've become a full-time husband. Uh, so my wife, um, she, she, my wife and I are spending more time together than we ever have, especially at this time of year. Um, but it's, it, there's, a, there's a little hashtag that's going around, which is, uh, I think, dream today, travel tomorrow. Mm. Um, I've probably gone, I'm, I don't want to dream anymore. I'm planning today to travel tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm spending the time planning where I want to go when lockdown finishes mm-hmm. um, and not only mapping those out but getting everything ready for that as well um, mm-hmm. but but also looking a little further forward to my next bit of downtime after uh, things start up again as to, mm-hmm. to where I'm going to go so it's a little bit like a, a wish jar um, that we've got going so there's things where Whatever we wish we'd like to do at that time, we're writing it down on a piece of paper. We're putting it into our wish jar. Okay. And then, uh, when lockdown finishes, we'll take that out and say, where are we going this weekend or, or this evening? So whether it's a dinner or a little bit of travel, then we plan that. So, um, it, But it hasn't stopped us planning things. Uh, we're, still, we're still planning and uh, the glass is always half full. Mm-hmm. I need to get a top up. Mm-hmm. But I think that is something interesting I should probably learn from you and start, I mean, starting this uh, wish jar so that at least I won't be like, oh, okay, now I'm out from this lockdown. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All of a sudden, you, people may have this, uh, this, this sense of, of freedom and to do yes. what? And it's all of a sudden, what should I do? Yes, have a ready-made yes. suggestion. Yeah. Correct. I, 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 I can't. I can't claim that idea. I got that suggestion off somebody, uh, a, 
a really good follower off uh, off Instagram, a lady that mm. I follow, and I thought that's mm. a really good idea. She was doing it for her daughter. So, um, but apart from that, I, I still were allowed one hour of exercise a day. Oh, that's here, good. So. Um, my, my exercise hour can sometimes go for a little longer because I'm bad at timekeeping. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll get out and I'll, I'll go for a ride on my bike or I'll go for a run. Um, so, yeah, the, the days go an amazingly quick. Um, so it's, it's a good time to look after yourself, I think, most importantly. Yes. Um, eating healthy, being healthy, uh, being good with your mind as well. So, yeah. That's, yeah. that's what I've been doing. Yeah, I agree with you. Once you get out of the house, you realize that time passes so quickly and you somehow lost track of it, especially when you're doing something that you really enjoy. So before I ask you about another passion of yours, I would like to ask our viewer, viewers, what do you think of UK? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Let us know in the comments. So, okay, back to you, Pete. I see that when you are not working, you are always on the saddle. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's, it takes me back to my childhood, uh, and I, I was only thinking about this last week. It's when you get your first bicycle um, and you learn how to ride, you, those little wheels, the, the trainer wheels or the stabilisers are taken off and your, your parents let go of the saddle, um, and then you're riding on your own. But then it's when you meet your friends and you go out on that great adventure, uh, it's almost like your first bit of freedom, uh, and the world is the world is really your great adventure playground. You might only be just around the corner from your house, but you mm. could be in a different country. Um, and I, I guess as you grow a little older, you get cars. You might meet your wife or your husband and have children. Some of mm. these things disappear. But about eight eight years ago, nine nine years ago. Um, I bought a bicycle, a second-hand bicycle, mm-hmm. um, to to get fit because I'd uh, I'd, in, I'd been enjoying a few too many pastries whilst working, and <laughs> um, <laughs> and all of a sudden I found that love of cycling because what I didn't realise is only ten minutes from where I live in London, I'm out mm-hmm. of suburbia and into beautiful rolling uh, countryside, which is called the the North Downs of the Kent countryside. Mm. And Kent is Kent is the largest county in England, uh, so it goes all the way from just outside of London down to Dover, the port of Dover. Um, so there's some great countryside, whether it's the North Downs or the South Downs. And this whole world opened up uh, for my wife and I. My wife's a, a very good cyclist herself, and then one bicycle turned into another bicycle to another adventure to flying over to Europe and. Uh, <laughs> and Eight, nine years later, we've uh, we've sort of got a little bit serious about mm-hmm. our cycling and also our enjoyment of it as well. So that's – it's, and I still get that same uh, sense of freedom, um, call it escapism, adventure, uh, but also exploration as well uh, from my cycling. So, yeah, that's that, – that, that is an absolute passion of mine. Uh, yeah. For sure. And that's yeah. that's what a lot of that planning has been happening uh, whilst during lockdown as to where we're going on our bicycles next. So, um, yeah. you know, I was just I was chatting to you offline before <laughs> and um, I'm just I'm taking final delivery today of a, a few items so that we can, uh, as soon as the lockdown finishes, we'll be just putting some small bags on our bikes and going off on on weekend and three-day, you know, two-night adventures out into the countryside. You know, we stay at... Little uh, bed and breakfasts, little yeah. country pubs. Yeah. But, you know, we ride through the countryside at, at a gentle pace, taking in the sights. And mm-hmm. I'm sure as your guests would under would appreciate, as, as well as you, you're, you're seeing everything at a, from a different angle, a different yeah. perspective and a different pace. And if you want to stop and have that afternoon coffee or, you know, just a, a drink or just watch the world go by, you can. Um, but it also allows you to see um, a different part of the countryside where it's maybe not so busy. So, Yeah, you know, you're getting, the more you talk about it, my leg is just getting so itchy, you know. I just can't <laughs> wait. I just can't wait to get out of the house and hit on my bicycle. As we know, Europe is big on cycling, especially cycling as a mode of transportation. 
even in big cities, there are always dedicated bike parks, uh, bike paths or bike lanes on the road. Throughout Europe, there are a total of 16 long distance cyclic routes. How many of these routes have you ride on? Um, I was I was looking at the map uh, last week, mm. and I haven't done any end to end per se. Mm -hmm. But part of it, any part of it? Yeah, for sure. Um, part of Euro Four, I've done. Okay. Um, also, there is the the number I, I can't exactly quite recall, but it goes down through the Pyrenees, part of the Pyrenees, so northern. Uh, or southwestern uh, France uh, mm -hmm. and into north, into the Basque country. Uh, that is the Mediterranean route, Eurovelo 8. Yep, Eurovelo 8. Yes. Um, and part of the one that goes down towards the French Riviera, Marseille, um, French it goes Riviera. down, I think it comes down through, um, out of Switzerland, ah, and then down okay. towards Nice. Uh, that is Absolutely beautiful, I have to say. Um, and the other one, the, the trans-European one that, that comes east to west, so going up over through Belgium, um, the number, I just haven't got it up on my map at the moment, I'm sorry. There is, um, okay. I've done a the little one bit on of, the Belgium, okay. Yeah, Belgium, and it also goes through Austria. Oh, I, think I think that is yeah. six. That is a very popular route currently. Yes. Euro Valley yes. Six. We start from the Atlantic Ocean all the way cutting across Europe into the Black Sea. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it, it is a beautiful route because I, I you don't need to look at it from start to finish, but you take segments of it and whether it's Belgium, which is fantastic for riding because it one, it's flat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the Belgians, it's their national sport, and you've got great food, got great beer, and you've got some some great architecture there to enjoy as well. But then as you get a little further east, uh, when you get into Austria, which well, Austria is my favourite country because I was lucky enough to live there for, for five winters, mm -hmm. um, but great for cycling as well. So, And the, the one down that... Uh, uh, it goes down through the centre of France, if mm. that takes in the regions of Provence, um, which it goes down through Avignon, so I think it, it traces part of the Rhone River. Uh, ah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a, I have to say that's a stunning part of the world because uh, that was my first part of my first overseas cycling trip uh, with my wife and my sister and brother-in-law from Australia. They came over and we rode, um, and there were some high roads from the Tour de France, but it's when we got into Provence in uh, in France. Um, it's where my my wife actually fell back in love with France once again because there was the beautiful lavender fields. They were they were harvesting the lavender at that time. So as we were riding through uh, the fields at those days, there was a smell of lavender in the mm -hmm. air as they were pressing the oil. Um, you'd ride through the the little villages and the the bakeries. You could smell the fresh baguettes every morning. So um, it's one of the the big items that determines if we like a place um how good the food is because the beauty of riding as you know is you can eat whatever you like <laughs> true true yeah true. because you've you've rewarded yourself uh, with yes all the work, but. yes you have get all our viewers our audience very excited about cycling in europe not only just the cycle the sightseeing but the food you know the people so anyone who wants to start your cycling in europe tell us in the comments well, I, th I think that I must go back. Sorry to interrupt. That Euro Four, which goes along the Atlantic coast, I think it starts in Saint Malo. Um, mm -hmm. um, that's a beautiful part because Saint Malo, you've got fantastic oysters. Um, oh, oysters, yeah, <laughs> my favourite. <laughs> because yeah, because you go Saint Malo, you go round the bay up to to Mont Saint Michel, uh, the uh, the beautiful abbey, mm -hmm. and that whole bay there is renowned for their uh, their. Their fresh oysters, um, their their mussels, their seafood. Um, you've got beautiful uh, cider, um, calvados, and also their lamb, their salt marsh lamb there, uh, and their potatoes and apples. It's it's really nice. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. from 
That's it. Unfortunately, that's where I'm planning on going as soon as lockdown finishes and the ferries open up. I'm going to ride down there and, and ride across uh, along the coastline there because I'll, there's some places I'd like to take my wife. Okay. Plus, there's good food. <laughs> okay. We have to move on because you're just getting me jealous. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, in fact, we actually have a trip on uh, Eurovelo 15, the Rye Route in May, end yes. of May. We will be cover covering the, the part in Switzerland. But unfortunately, because of the COVID situation, so we have to postpone the trip now. So I think Mabel is very disappointed as well as some of our cyclists who have signed up because it was like, oh, one of their dream trips in plan. But now this has to be shelved and move on. I think, I think the important thing to remember is the Rhine River isn't going anywhere. It'll still be there. Yes. Um, I think it's also nice to think that when everything returns to normal, mm -hmm. I think that there's also going to be a wonderful window there where it's not going to be enormously busy, even at the, 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 the traditional peak times yes. as, as everything starts to get back to normal. And I'd like to think that, you could get some really special moments out there in Europe where you feel like it's you've almost got it to yourself um, compared to you know some of the, the really busier periods where mm. it, you know if it's a central city or even just a, a, a more regional like Rhine route where it can be busier with other cyclists. So that's a little bit that keeps me going as well. Yes, that's right. Because part of our work, we do a lot of research, read up and planning for product offering development. So the more I do, every Eurovelo route seems like an epic ride. And each of them spends thousands of kilometers spanning across four, five, even six to eight countries. If I ask you to recommend, which part of Europe will you recommend for leisure cyclists like us? I would, if it was for, for starting and if, if it was your, your first time over there, easily I would look at something like you've just said on the, the Rhone, mm -hmm. sorry, the Rhine River, uh, because it covers Germany and Switzerland. Um, one, the infrastructure is fantastic. Um, and just the, the experience for the, for the guests, I think, would be second to none. Um, also, something in France that is that, that is nice rolling territory, mm -hmm. nothing too mountainous, because it's France, um, <laughs> <laughs> and and regional France is significantly different to a Paris uh, mm. per se. Um, mm. But I, I think that I think that's also relative to every uh, every country, uh, the cities, um, whether it's it's our home places. Uh, Country, country life, country pace is very different to city life, city pace. Um, definitely, but 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 definitely something along the the, the Rhine area because it is nice and rolling as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it it would be too too hilly or too onerous, but just the the level of infrastructure uh, mm -hmm. and let's and let's be honest, uh, the food and the uh, and the drink is very nice as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and everything's of a high standard. Yes, because that is also the first Euro Velo route that is certified. And because it is so well developed since day one, so it is a very established route for beginner cyclists who are attempting their first ride overseas in Europe. Yes. Yeah. And, and I think what, what, you'll, what is achieved from that is uh, an enjoyment of it. Um, yes. And, and a desire to go further as well. Yes. Um, and it's those countries that, that add on to the, uh, the the more eastern part of, mm -hmm. of that route, which is, you know, the other parts of Austria, maybe down into Slovenia or Slovakia as well, they are becoming incredibly developed as well. Um, and they, they are beautiful in their own right, I right. have to say. Yes. Um, that, that whole area out there is a favourite part of mine and it, it's becoming very popular for a lot of uh, travellers that have already seen parts of Europe. Yes. Uh, especially, especially with our guests at Trafalgar and, and Cost Saver. Um, yes. We see a lot, of, a lot of repeat guests out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then what about those cyclists who love roller coaster rides and climbs? Where will you recommend them? I, I'd, I'd probably have to ask you uh, 
to quantify roller coasters and climbs. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, my wife can be really tough, uh, but uh, we've uh, one of my all time favorites mm -hmm. is a place in Italy, it's called the Dolomites. Oh, um, and that is on our list to go back and do more of, even if it's the same again. Yes, uh, a couple of a couple of reasons. Uh, it's Italy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, Italy, yes. so the the food is fantastic. Uh, the scenery is. I, I can only call it jaw dropping. I've I've never, I've I've been fortunate enough to live uh, in the Alpine region of Austria, live mm -hmm. and work there, um, mm -hmm. and just my work. I go to great Alpine regions, but I was um, just left jaw jaw open uh, from looking out our bedroom window where we were. And we stayed in a place called Corvara, um, which is in the Dolomites. The roads are fantastic. Every Wednesday uh, out of Corvara, there is a 60-kilometre uh, road network which is closed to cars every single Wednesday. Oh. Uh, it's called the, yeah, it's called the Sele Ronda so that people can go out and they can ride um, without uh, fear of any vehicles on on the road. Uh, there's lots of cyclists, um, but the important thing to remember in all of these mountainous places, the or you know with rolling hills, something that, that struck me three years ago when I was there is the level of e-bikes that are available now, uh, massive. So, and it's also opened up avenues for um, people that are um, maybe. A little more mature age, or maybe their their fitness or health isn't allowing them to uh, be the motor themselves, so they can still go out and enjoy. But yeah, definitely the Dolomites. That that's beautiful, absolutely stunning, and uh, it's got some good climbs. Uh, it's got some tough climbs, um, but also that Provence region in France, mm -hmm. um, which it's a little town called Bedouin. Uh, it, it B E D. O I N it looks like Bedouin, um, and that's at the bottom of yeah. It's at the bottom of what they call Mont Ventoux, which is an incredibly tough, um, challenging climb. Mm -hmm. But there's beautiful rolling hills around there. Um, aside from that, there is definitely two more. Uh, one is the Loire Valley uh, because you've got the beautiful chateaus. Yes, um, the wine. You've got, the wine, <laughs> the food, um, and great, just beautiful countryside. Um, that, that, that is lovely indeed. Um, but also just Belgium in f what they call Flanders. So Flanders, that, that really covers places like um, Ypres, mm -hmm. um, Ghent, uh, sort of over to Bruges. It's, it's not rolling, um, but it's flat, but it's just, it's got a beautiful countryside and just easy to ride. If that was uh, something to, something to start with, and very very cycle friendly. Okay. Um, plus, they've got mussels and fritz. Ah, <sighs> <laughs> foot again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like I have to start planning some e bikes itinerary so that we won't be missing out on some of the epic rides in the Italian Alps. <laughs> it's it is, it, it is truly amazing. Um, Cheryl, I think you've been to Switzerland, so you, yeah. can, you can appreciate. Um, I, I think, one, it's the views, but it's also that sense of achievement when you, you're at the top of that, that hill and mm -hmm. you have that view to yourself. And yeah. it's, it's like, wow, I did it myself. Um, yeah. And I think e-bikes are opening up a whole new sector for people. Um, yeah. or whether it's for hotels or for uh, for travel operators like yourself, mm -hmm. it, it does provide that to other people as well. Yes, so, it's, it or, provided an option to allow more cyclists to enjoy more beyond what their physical level can take them to. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, sure. wow. Really, really, we have to really start planning for 2021 seasons and Europe is definitely going to be one of our top focus in our collection. <laughs> and as far as food goes, don't uh, 
be careful not to forget about somewhere like San Sebastian oh. in northern Spain. Mm. Pamplona San Sebastian, fantastic little uh, uh, tapas and pinchos bars. So, And more Michelin-starred restaurants than I think anywhere else in the world. So, yes, in San Sebastian. Mm, mm, yeah. Excellent food. So, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, back on food again. And sorry. Yes, it's okay. So during yeah. the low season in Europe, you will often head back to Western Australia for a couple of months and you will usually bring your bike along too. Our Aussie friends who are residing in Perth have been egging us to visit, luring us to go to Perth, which is amazing, uh, with its amazing bicycle network. Will you tell us, too, why we should have Perth or Western Australia as a cycling destination in our trip collection? Absolutely. I guess being a Perth native, mm -hmm. uh, and when I lived and worked there, I didn't realise how good the cycling network is. And when I say cycling network, it's a completely segregated cycle path mm -hmm. uh, to the roads. Um, and it's and Perth is not a hilly city. It's flat. Oh. So it, it's very flat. Uh, That's for, nice for to know. Most, <laughs> yeah, for, for the most part of it. Um, but you can ride from Perth CBD, central city, mm -hmm. um, more or less all the way to Fremantle on i would say which is about 18 kilometers 15 to 18 kilometers mm -hmm. a lot of it along the swan river uh so beautiful views and about 50 percent of that is dedicated cycle path or very quiet suburban roads um and once once you leave perth and you get once you get down to Fremantle, you've got um the oceanfront, you've got the choice of beaches, you've got beachside cafes, uh, harbourside restaurants, microbreweries, um, and the opportunity that if you needed to, to take the train back from Fremantle to Perth. Um, that's one part. Uh, if you're wanting something a little more adventurous, and something only I found uh, on my last visit there with my wife was just outside of Perth is what they call the, the Darling Ranges. Um, and this is a, a, a mountain range which runs parallel to the coast. Uh, and they have some very light, easy gravel tracks mm. uh, that follow. It's, it's called the Heritage Trail. So it, uh, it follows the trail of um, up to a place called Les Murdy and Les Murdy Dam, uh, which is quite amazing. Uh, and then there's, as you go further south into the winery region, so we're talking Margaret River, um, also the Pemberton, Manjimup region. Uh, there's a whole series of bicycle networks out there. Um, and for the very adventurous, there is what they call the, Mund the Mudabidi, uh, the Mudabidi track, which is a off-road track or gravel track, which runs the distance from Perth to Albany. Oh. But, uh, that's a little more adventurous. That's so. more for the, for the really good cyclists. Yeah, I would, I would think so. But you can do small sections of that mm. um, in in a day if, mm. if you wanted to do a half, you know, a one day adventure taster sort of thing. Uh, but mm -hmm. you need to be, you need to make sure which time of year you do that. So, but when we go to Australia, my wife, my wife comes from the east coast, just south of Byron Bay. Mm -hmm. uh, so we spend half our time there, half our time in Perth. So, and actually in. The East Coast, they've just opened up, I think it's in Brisbane, the Brisbane Heritage Rail Cycle Network, which where they've taken an old rail line, they've mm -hmm. dug that up, and it's a dedicated cycle walking path um, south of Brisbane. So it links up all cafes and accommodation, which is beautiful as well. But Perth's the nicest one because that's where I come from. <laughs> Yes, I'm supposed to take part in the Tour de Brisbane in the beginning of April, but that was cancelled and postponed until uh -huh. next year. And then, in, in fact, even now, right now, I should be cycling in the east coast of Taiwan, but here I am at home talking to you. <laughs> Dreaming can, of cycling in Taiwan. Yes, yes. I can really hear my bike calling out to me to bring him out now, no? whether it's to Europe or even to Western Australia. And we really look forward for the world to return back to normalcy so to everyone Absolutely. out there 
where will be your first holiday destination when you can travel? Put it in the comments to let us know. Pete, thank you so much for sharing. And it's time now for me to invite Mabel back online and see if our audience has any comments or questions for you. Thanks, Cheryl. Wonderful to see you again. Yeah, yeah. So don't go our first. No. Let's Mabel back. <laughs> Hi. Welcome, Mabel. I can see there is a lot of comments there. So please, yes. please shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got uh, our viewer, WF Tong, very excited about ah. cycling in, the, in Europe. He was saying that he wanted oysters when you guys were mentioning about oysters. And then uh, Pete, he was asking you not to bring your wife on your cycling trips. Bring him along instead. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure how your wife is going to take that. Um, and he was, um, Shan, when we were asking about, you know, uh, when we think about London, what does it remind you of? So she shared that it reminded her of the London Bridge, Paris, and Trafalgar Square. Fantastic. Yeah. I have a few questions for you, though, Pete. I'm just wondering, because uh, looking at how much you cycle, on average, how much distance do you cover a day when you're out on your uh I will, uh, per day, I will ride anything from 50 kilometres to 120 kilometres. Oh, wow. Okay. Roughly. All right. And uh, what is the one thing that you really enjoy um, the most on a cycling trip? Other than food, I mean, <laughs> I established that food is the number one, but what really, what do you really enjoy when you're out on the road on your bicycle? I have to say, it's just it's the the sense of freedom and adventure. Um, even and in saying that, I, I ride a lot nearby home, and I have many different ways that I can go. But it's when I go over, away overseas or, or to continental Europe that I'm riding somewhere that I haven't ridden before, um, and it, it's where that sense of adventure comes from. Um, mm. I can look at all the pictures from where the endpoint is, but it's. It's an old, it's maybe an old cliche, but it's not always about the destination, but it's about the journey. Um, That's true. Actually, yeah. when, especially when you're on a bicycle, you know, it's really very much about the journey. It's not about getting from one point to the other. It's, it's just it's enjoying. Not the destination is the journey of getting yeah. there. Enjoying the views, the people that you meet along the way. And because the bicycle really brings us off the beaten track, we don't go to the, the uh, usual tourist area. So you get to really experience the local culture of the country that you're visiting. You know, the people, Correct. the food and all that. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Uh, Pete, um, since you're based in, uh, I'm just wondering whether do you have any hidden gems in London that you'd like to share with our audience that maybe we do not know? <sighs> I have, ooh, hidden gems. <laughs> <laughs> I've always, uh, I've always got my big three that I always talk about, which is always Westminster Abbey, St Paul's Cathedral, and also the Tower of London. Um, but it's also getting on the um, on the river and going down to Greenwich, um, and where the Greenwich Observatory is, and also uh, there's a little market down there. There's the Cutty Sark. Uh, okay. Which which is beautiful, um, but I love coffee as well. Uh, and there's also some great what they call third wave coffee shops um, opening up all over London. Okay. And it's it's just sometimes what what my wife and I do is we'll we'll get onto our bikes early on a Sunday or a Saturday morning before the rush starts. We ride into London, mm -hmm. and then come back, have an early morning coffee, and come back home before it gets too busy and. It's sometimes just Googling third wave coffee um, or there's a really good magazine that I get it's called Caffeine Magazine. Um, and <laughs> Caffeine there's, Magazine. <laughs> yeah. And they always showcase um, the new coffee shops that are opening up. And, you know, some, some are good, some are better than others. Um, but then they're just little places that we more or less trip over. Um, and... That probably goes back to something we're talking about. I think this day and age, it's it's very easy to follow the Instagram and follow the uh, the TripAdvisor, 
Yeah. And that that great old um, travel experience of just tripping over something and going exploring yourself, mm. and not and not following a recommendation, mm. um, then all of a sudden you've found something for the first time. Not because Instagram follower or you know with one point seven million followers said you must go there. Yeah. Um, so. I've lost count of the number of towns we've ridden through only to turn around and go back and try a little cafe in a place because we thought, oh, why not, and spent two hours there. <laughs> I mean, all of us have different tastes and different opinions and also something that somebody doesn't like doesn't mean it's something that you won't like mm-hmm. unless you give it a try. It's very subjective. Yeah, it is. Um, let's see. I have a question out of curiosity. Mm-hmm. How many bicycles do you own, Pete? Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but between my wife and I, I've got three. <laughs> I've only got three. You only got three. So how many yes. does the wife have? <clears throat> <laughs> my wife's a very good cyclist. <laughs> okay. I, can see, I can see from, from your Instagram pictures. <laughs> Yeah, she cycles really well. Yeah. Where do you find oh, the space? Yes, exactly. I was, I'm just about to ask, where do you find the space for eight bicycles? Oh, we have a garage, but we don't have a car. We should have is... this talk inside the garage so that we get to see the collection. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> oh, okay, there's one, oh, right okay, there. one there. <laughs> Are they all road there's bikes a... that you have? Oh, is it uh, no, no, we've got a mix of uh, of road bikes and I've, we just bought last year what we call gravel or adventure bikes. So um, oh. one, ones that have got bigger tyres um, mm. that we can go onto gravel tracks or a little bit off-road. Um, not suspension mountain bikes, um, but what, what they're just called gravel bikes. So, yeah. 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 And my wife, my wife has a... A hybrid, a city bike, which she does the shopping on. She tells me, but I don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's a ladies' thing. It's just like when we buy shoes, we need different colors, we need a uh, different style, different design for different occasions. So I think it comes to buy is the same. You need a city bike when you get into the city. When you go into the countryside on the trails, you need a gravel bike. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. So I can concur with her. We are on the same wavelength. <laughs> Very hard to stop at just one. Indeed, you know, indeed. That's one for every occasion. Yes, indeed. indeed. <laughs> Do we have any more questions? Uh, no, I think we've answered all the questions by our audience. Mm-hmm. So to our audience, if you are interested in planning a cycling trip to Europe, do not hesitate to get in touch with us. You can contact us uh, via WhatsApp at our number, which is plus six five eight seven one four three three two one. Okay, back to you, Cheryl. Thanks, Mabel. So before we end today's chatter, I would like to share with you about our virtual travel talk uh, that's taking place tomorrow. We will be inviting Grace and Iris from Northern Territory of Australia on board to share about the Great Australian Outback. So do tune in to Facebook at 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. tomorrow, Singapore time, to hear all about it live. For next Wednesday chatter at 3.30 p.m., we are inviting another of our friends, Greta, who is residing in Spain now. So Greta is going to teach us how to cook one Spanish dish. I'm going to keep it a secret at the present moment. So do remember to tune in uh, next week at 3.30. This session will be rebroadcasted and you can find our Facebook page later. If you enjoyed today's chatter, please do give us a like, comment and share. Now, before we log offline, shall we have a group photo together? Yes, put on your best smile. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much. Pete, do not go yet. So thank you very much, everybody. Take care and goodbye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in.